here from the book of Romans. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. We're just going to read the one verse, and then we'll go to the Lord in prayer. So it'll be Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, Brother Tony, would you lead us in prayer, please? Praise God. Lord, we lift you up this morning. We magnify you. We give you praise and glory and honor in this service this morning. And we ask that you bless the pastor as he delivers the word this morning, knowing our minds that the word will have a clean lodging place, Father. And just touch us, lift us up, and encourage us this morning as we lift you up in the word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. We'll be talking this morning about the love of God, the love of our Savior, and the unrelenting love. It, it's even in the midst of, of the tough times or sorrow or difficulty, just like Sister Marcia just saying, he's the lily in the valley. He blooms all the time. He doesn't bloom once in a while. He blooms all the time. And that's what we're going to talk about is the love of God and how his love for you and I, it isn't just sometimes. It's not just when it's convenient for God to love you. It's always God loves you and I to a degree that none of us really fully understand. And that love is there for us. And that's what this verse uh, starts us off with, is it says that God commendeth his love toward us. That's you and I. God showed his love to us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even though we knew that we were eat up with sin, but yet Jesus still was willing to die for us so that we could have a right relationship with the Father. Amen. And God loved us so much, we know John 3, 16, God loved us so much and he gave his only begotten son. So we know that love is there, that God has shown his love to us and it is with us. He showed it to us even when we were lost in his sin, he still loved us. Once we give our life to Jesus Christ through Jesus and through him, he loves us. Someday we'll spend eternity with him. He loves us. The love of God, it just it doesn't stop. Now, if there is sin in our life and we choose sin over a right standing with God, okay, does God still love you? Yes. Will God pass judgment on sin? Yes. Okay, even in his perfect love, God's judgments are righteous. So if we choose to live in sin, knowing that we can have a relationship with God through the Son, but we don't do it, we stay in sin, then even then, God loves us. He says that Jesus died while we were still yet sinners. He still loves us, but his perfect love will bring about righteous judgment. So we cannot then step back and say, well, God loves me no matter what I do, so it doesn't matter. What you do does matter. Yeah. And God, yeah, that's true. He loves you no matter what you do. But his judgments are righteous. And he will either judge you according to mercy through the Son of Jesus Christ, his Son, or he will judge you according to your sin. But his love never changes. God's love is always the same. Turn with me now. It's still in Romans, but let's jump forward a few chapters. Let's go over to Romans chapter 8, and we're going to start in verse 35. Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Still dealing with the love of God, His unrelenting love for you and I. And this kind of is going to hit a little bit with what I think we are dealing with here in the, the environment that we live in. The, the, the troubles and the stress. I, you know, I don't remember a time, I really don't remember a time when it, it was just stressful. It, 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 ain't, it ain't even necessarily a physical thing. It's just a mental thing. It's stressful. Even for you and I or for anyone that physically we're doing fine. Physically speaking, I'm doing fine. Stress-wise, not so much. 
And I think that's true for all of us. Amen. Yeah. And then there are those that are struggling with both the, the, the stress of life, throw it on top of that, the health of their body. Right. Times are just hard right now on us. But we know that God's love remains. Look at it with me. Romans 8 verse 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he says, Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Can any of these outside circumstances, that's basically what those are, can any of the outside circumstances separate me from God's love? And then he quoted an Old Testament scripture to remind us that we will deal with these things. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. So he reminds us even going back to the Old Testament. Don't forget now, you will face these things. You're going to have times of tribulation. You're going to have times of famine. You're going to have times of persecution. He said, don't forget now, you will face those things, but can they separate you from the love of God? And he answers it in verse 37. He said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Not only is his love for us always present. It's with us no matter any of those situations we face. He said, not only is my love with you, he says, God's love makes you more than conquerors. Yeah. Not only do you conquer these things, you supersede these things Amen. through the love of God. But then these two verses, and I love these two verses, 38, 39. For I am persuaded, and I like that statement, for I am persuaded. If you've got to convince me of something, then that means you've got to persuade me. You've got to persuade me to believe in something or to agree with something. You've got to convince me. But here it's saying, for I am persuaded. You don't have to persuade me. You don't have to convince me of nothing. You don't have to teach me this. I know this. And as God's children, you can claim these verses. Said, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, if I was to die today, does that separate me from the love of God? No. If I am alive as I am today, does that separate me from the love of God? No. I'm in the presence of the Almighty God. He loves me. He said that nor angels, God's holy workers, they're not going to lead us away from the love of God. They're going to lead us into the love of God. But then there's nor principalities, nor powers. Now those are the satanic forces. Okay? And yeah, we fight. We fight a spiritual warfare every day, every night. But remember what he said. We are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Okay? So even those forces, as powerful as they may be, they cannot separate me from the love of God. And I really like this. Nor things present, nor things to come. A lot of people, we do, it's, it's pretty common nature. In it. We worry about tomorrow. We, we, we stress out about today, and we worry about tomorrow. And right here he's saying, no matter what I deal with today, and no matter what tomorrow may or may not bring, it cannot separate me from the love of God. Amen. He is with me. Then he said, nor height, nor depth. Whether I'm flying high on the mountaintop, shouting hallelujahs, or I am down in a big, deep valley, and I am struggling to make it spiritually. Yeah. Either spot that I may find myself, God's love is with me. Right. He said, nor any other creature. Basically, the Apostle Paul just give up naming things. He just said, I don't care you put it in there. It can't separate you from the love of God. And he said, that shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I want to restate this one more time. 
The love of God is eternal. Eternity past, eternity future, <coughs> present, God's love is perfect always. Yeah. But that does not give us the right to say, well, no matter what, nothing can separate me from the love of God. So I can get away with things. Don't get that thought process. No. Because the love of God is righteous even in judgment. Okay? Yes. So that is not a cop out on these verses to say, well, he loves me no matter what. Nothing can separate me from the love of God so I can do that which I please. No. His love will still love you. But his judgments are righteous, right. and his judgments even have love in them. And I'd much rather experience his grace and his mercy than his judgments. Yes. And that's up to you and I. But his love never changes. His love cannot be dragged away from us. Turn with me now to Psalm chapter 139. Psalm chapter 139, verses 7 through 12. More verses dealing with how that no matter what we go through in life, no matter what we face, God is with us. Psalm 139 and verse 7. The psalmist says here, he said, Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? Now notice that. Again, a question like the Apostle Paul asked. Apostle Paul said, well, Who can separate me from the love of God? The psalmist says, can I get away from the presence of God? Is there anything that I can do where he's not with me? And then he gives some scenarios in verse 8. He said, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Again, we can go this route with those verses. If I am doing great on the mountaintop, shouting the hallelujahs, right. I feel like I'm in the heavenlies. The Spirit of God is there. But if I am in a valley and it feels like I'm going through hell on earth yeah. and it feels that way and it is hard and I'm struggling, guess what? The Spirit of God is still there. Amen. Amen. These are promises, <coughs> folks. He said, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, that'd be a morning dove, I just fly <laughs> away to the furthest places out in the sea. Even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. Even if I feel like I've just ended up somewhere far, far away from anybody and everything and I'm all alone, God's presence is with me. His hand holds me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the light shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. You ever felt like you was in darkness? As God's children, there are times when we just really struggle, and it feels like we are in darkness. And he's saying, even if I am in darkness, the struggles, the trials of life, whatever it may be, I feel like I'm in darkness, and I can't see anything good in this. He says, even in that darkness, the light is about me. The light's in it. The light's there. Even the darkness and the light are alike unto him. So basically, if I feel like I'm struggling in a dark situation, God's light is there. If I'm doing fine and things seem to be running smooth and the light seems to be illuminating everything around me, God's light is there. So no matter what we face, no matter what we go through, no matter where we may end up and deal with in our life, God is there. And his love is there. His love for us doesn't go up and down according to life situations. We ride an, emotion, an emotional roller coaster. We do. We go up and down with our emotions. And one day we seem to handle it well, the next day we don't so much. But with God, that's not what he does. He doesn't ride one of those roller coasters. His love is steadfast, sure, and perfect beyond measure. Beyond what we comprehend. His love is with us. Nothing can separate us from his love. 
God's love is with us, no matter what we're struggling with. If you're doing great today and you're flying high on that mountaintop, shout hallelujah. There you go. It's great. If you're struggling today and you seem like you're in the valley, go ahead and try shouting some hallelujahs because I guarantee you the presence of God is still there. You're not alone. You've not been abandoned. God's love is still there. His spirit is still there. Stand with me if you would, please.